Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. You're standing here underneath the mountains as they are starting to take shape, and we have a bit of a mob farm down here. I really need to do a little bit more lighting. I've been doing that as we go, basically, as this thing begins to cast a larger and larger shadow, and it's taking me longer and longer to actually get out from underneath its shadow and take a look at the thing from the air because let me tell you this thing is looking a lot larger than it was since you last saw it actually i've mostly filled in the gap in between these two sections of the mountain and i'm trying my best to make sure they have separate peaks with these valleys in between but the valleys of course are where the ski routes are actually going to go so we're actually going to end up with some of these areas being a little bit lower than this and hopefully that will lead to us being able to build some cool ski routes but i thought as seems to be the custom these days, I would give you a quick update on how the mountain building project is going. And it's going very well. Obviously, like I said, still lots to do on this, still other peaks to build, and the whole back of this needs to get done. We're going to be building some stuff inside these as well, not just farms and stuff, but we're going to have a dwarven feasting hall and a few other things as well. We've got a few caves starting to pop up here and there. But the first section of this project, as always, is going to just be building the entire thing up in the first place before we get to detailing. So so that continues apace. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different though. A while ago, when I last visited the end, I suggested to the viewers, you guys at home, that it might be a good idea to do an episode about how to reset the end dimension. For those of you who are server admins on multiplayer servers or even just a single player wanting to know how to get slightly easier access to some of the stuff out there in the end and not have to go all the way out to the far reaches of the end every time you want some shulker shells or any time you want a fresh elytra, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you guys exactly how to manage that kind of stuff because all too often the resources in the end can become a little bit scarce. So today I'm going to fly out to some cities in the end and we're going to find one that we can use as an example of how we are going to reset the areas of the end. Let's hop over to the stronghold first and we're going to hop into the end portal and make our way to the end dimension. This has been a little while since we've seen this project on camera but as you can see it remains just this giant ring around the outside connecting all the gateways. I haven't really done much on this. This is yet another one of those projects that I always want to come back to, but right now we're building a mountain and things like that get a little bit distracting for me. People often ask me when I'm going to return to this, and I mentioned earlier in the series that I want to turn this whole thing into a giant spaceport. That's kind of a long-term project. Likewise, the Nether Hub is a long-term project. Likewise, the Piston Bolt Railways to various places are long-term projects, and mostly I'm trying to focus on some stuff that we can actually see the impact of in the overworld as we're kind of hanging out and running around and I feel like that and the nether hub the mountain and the nether hub are kind of my main priorities right now anyway let's step through this gateway into the outer end islands we're on one of the kind of nondescript areas of this the enderman farm is somewhere over there further around the ring you would find the end village where i brought those villagers they are still out there doing their thing and from here we're going to fly out in this direction roughly until we find an early end city and hopefully we should find one of those relatively quickly and while we're taking this journey i thought i would take a quick moment to explain why you might want to reset the end because some of you are kind of wondering why this is coming up as a topic in the first place and probably talking about it being a little bit cheaty to reset the end dimension and reset all of the cities and stuff that are out here and to be honest, it kind of is, but there is also often a very good reason for doing so. Much like the overworld and the nether, the end is a practically infinite dimension. It will stretch about 30 million blocks in every direction, so that you'll only find a world border in a very distant area of it. And the crown jewel of the end dimension at this point is the end city. They're basically Minecraft's end game dungeons filled with the best loot the game has to offer. It's not just diamonds and diamond gear, but it's also stuff like shulker shells and elytra, which are commonly the most important things that people go out to an end city for if they are regular Minecraft players. There we go, we've got one sneaking into view over here, and I'm fairly certain this will be one I have explored before, but if not, I will probably do a little bit of looting here while I continue this explanation. At the time of this video, shulkers only appear in end cities, and they are only spawned when the end city generates for the first time. Shulkers drop shulker shells, two of which are required to make shulker boxes, and with vanilla default settings shulker shells aren't even a guaranteed drop even with looting you'll only get one shulker shell from a single shulker and if you want enough to make a bunch of shulker boxes which become increasingly useful in endgame for moving 
moving inventory around, compacting storage and item collection mechanisms and stuff like that, you will probably need to get a whole bunch of them. For that, you will need to raid a bunch of end cities. And the same is true of getting Elytra. If you want some backup sets of wings for the off chance that you end up losing some Elytra in lava or when you're fighting the Wither, for example, you'll probably need to visit a lot of end cities and hope that they have the end ships on them which grant the Elytra in the first place. Now, end cities do take a while to find. They are relatively few and far between out here in the void. And there is no typical end city either. This is a quite a large one and thankfully it does have a boat out there on the end of the bridge, but unfortunately, not all end cities are created equal, and some of them, the ones I like to call thumbs, just end up being a single room with a single tower on the top with like three shulkers in it max, which is not ideal. Of course, the more end cities you raid, the further and further you're going to have to go to find shulker boxes. Now consider if you're on a multiplayer server. An active multiplayer server has anything between two and possibly even up to a hundred or more players, and everyone's going to have to share the same end dimension. The end dimension is always the same for everybody. It is not unique to individual players. Therefore, the end cities are going to get raided pretty quickly, especially if there are power players who like to rush through the progression of the game, beat the dragon, and get themselves to end game very quickly. Even if you're prepared to do what a lot of other multiplayer servers do these days and implement a data pack that guarantees two shulker shell drops from every shulker, which results in every shulker basically being able to get you a shulker box, you're going to run out of shulker boxes pretty quickly. In addition to that, unlike the overworld and the nether, your options for travel are going to be pretty limited. Your first visit to the end islands is going to involve a lot of bridging, and while you might have the luxury of elytra flight on later visits, there's no way of instantly returning to the place where you left off. The end gateways, which generate each time you defeat the ender dragon, will take you a thousand blocks across the void to the outer islands, but no further. And while you find return gateways dotted around the distant reaches of the end, those are a one-way trip back to the central island so you can return to the overworld. There's no way to return to those gateways and continue from the point where you left the end last time. Now you can explore the end systematically, take notes of where you went last time and even bring maps with you because the end dimension can be mapped unlike the nether. There is open sky above you so there's no problem with the game creating a map of the end. But over time the process of reaching those far-flung end cities is going to become exponentially more time consuming and might even require you to mend your elytra's durability mid-journey. On a multiplayer server, someone else might even have got there first and just not told you about it. So that's why many players and admins on multiplayer servers frequently decide to reset the end dimension to give everybody a fair shot at getting elytra and shulker shells. Oh, and also dragon heads, if that's something you care about. So here I am with the remainder of this end city basically taken care of, and in the distance I can already see the silhouettes of a couple of others because my render distance is still <laughs> cranked pretty high from working on that mountain project. And let's quickly take the coordinates of this city because I'm going to try my best to locate this city, delete it, and then come back into the world with this city intact again. And for that, I am going to try and make my way back to the central island and even to the overworld so that we can be sure that we're not in this dimension when we start resetting parts of it. But in the meantime, we're going to switch over to my desktop. I'm going to show you a program called MCA Selector, which we have shown off in this series before, but it's worth a bit of a refresher course. And today, we're going to specifically take a look at how to delete regions of the end. Hey folks, welcome back. So here we are with the web browser open. I am on the GitHub page for MCA Selector. The URL is there in the address bar. You'll also find the link to this in the video description. And ignore all of the GitHub stuff at the top here unless you want to download all of this stuff independently of each other and see the update history and stuff like that. There is a bunch of documentation here for MCA Selector if you're interested in reading the full details of what the program can do. Of course, today we are mainly going to be focusing on resetting the end with it. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here where you see the, the section entitled Download and Installation. The current version, version 1.9.3, is compatible with Worlds in Minecraft 1.15, so that's all good. We're going to click on that. I've already downloaded it, but you can click on that and save it in your downloads folder. 
and it'll also tell you how to make sure that Java files can be launched as though they are executable files, which is kind of useful to know. And when you launch the program from your downloads folder, you're going to get a window like this, which I'm going to expand just so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing here. Now, there is going to be a file menu in the top left. You're going to click open and it's naturally going to find your Minecraft saves folder, or at least mine did. I don't know if yours does or not, but you can always locate to the Minecraft saves folder by typing percent app data percent like that it's going to open up the app data roaming folder and then you go into the dot minecraft folder look for your saves folder there and there it is on a mac that's going to be slightly different file architecture it's in your library under the application support folder but anyway we're going to open up the survival guide world and you'll see a few different folders inside of here now we're looking at the dimension folders specifically here. The region folder there is all of the regions for the overworld. And you have these other two folders which contain region folders which are called dim1 and dim negative one. And here you have to think about the structure of the Minecraft world itself. The nether is below the overworld and the end as a sort of sky dimension is considered to be above the overworld as though it's like space, right? So the way I remember this is that thinking of the overworld as dimension zero. Dimension negative one is below zero, so the nether is below the overworld and dim positive one or just dim one is above zero, which means it's the end because it's above the overworld. Now let's open this dim one folder click on the region folder there and click select folder and what that's going to do is load up a map of the end it's probably going to be slightly off center but you can center it and you can drag around in MCA selector by holding the middle mouse button the mouse wheel button the scroll wheel the kind of thing that you would use to click pick block and so forth and it's actually kind of cool seeing the dimension from this kind of overview because you can see what a mess we have made of various places around here you can see here this is the central end island of course in the middle of the map the central region of the map there and you can see what I've done in various places that red patch there is all of the redstone that I put around my end return portal and people frequently ask me why that is there that is from the episode where we had to spawn proof an area around the end return portal to make sure a shulker would go back through it when we were bringing shulkers to the overworld you'll also see that around there there are a few holes in the obsidian some torches placed down there that kind of thing and then this giant ring that encapsulates all of the end gateways and it looks pretty cool over here we have that rail that brought the shulkers back to the central island in the first place from the end park which is out there with the end city looming over it this is where i made that village out there with all of the grass and stuff we have a bunch of leaves and stuff over here that's clearly nembon's ender mini farm that we built all that time ago haven't been back there for a little while but it's still going strong and then more recently over here we have that plus shaped farm with all of the water around here that is actually my wither rose farm that is the farm where we have the uh, wither trapped in one of the bedrock return portals and the uh, endermen are being funneled into that section there to be killed by the wither to produce wither roses so that's out there as well and it's good that that is quite a large blue splodge because it makes it kind of clear that I've built something there and I don't want to delete that. The main thing you need to worry about when you are figuring out which regions of the end to delete is where you have already built stuff and the positions of the end gateways because there are 20 end gateways that will spawn around the outside of this central island and you can roughly see the positions of them there wherever there are notches on this wheel that is where you'll find those end uh, portals that take you out to the outer ring around here we might even be able to spot one or two of them in the islands around here they should all be on roughly the same axis i think that plus shape right there is one of them there's one there for example there is probably one somewhere over here i think yeah it's on this island there that's the the edge of the island that's the typically the portal i take to get to the end of park and you'll find those all the way around the outside here now if you want to delete regions of the end i personally think it is a good idea to make sure all of those portals remain intact and that you do not delete them either by mistake or on purpose some folks used to go into the files in this regions folder for the end and just delete all but the central four regions of the end dimension the only problem with that was for a start if you'd built anything else outside of that it would be destroyed but also any end gateways that you had generated would not spawn new portals when you went through them and more often than not that would result in a player being dropped into the void when they teleported out to one of the outer end islands instead of being placed safely on the nearest block it's basically the same as if you took out all of the land below the end gateway it doesn't really know where to put you at that point and so it just kind of drops you wherever you may be 
into the void, most likely, and that is a surefire recipe to lose all of your items, so you really don't want that to happen. Which is why I am preaching caution and recommending that you use a program like MCA Selector, because not only does it give you a really great overview of all of the regions of the end you've explored, it allows you to select them a lot more carefully and make sure that you don't delete anything from this inner ring. If you do want to go the file diving route and do that, I recommend making sure that you don't end up selecting any of these regions around here. So I guess that would be all of the central regions going out to about negative three, negative three, and two, two. So all of the regions which have either a two or a three in that position, as long as the other numbers don't go higher than that, those are the ones you want to avoid deleting, and anything on the inside as well. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when it comes to regions, I've made a video about this in the past, but if you look down there in the bottom left, just above my Windows Start menu button, it will show you the region that the mouse cursor is currently looking at. So this one up here in the top left of this square I've drawn is negative three, negative three, and that is the MCA file that you will find in the folder that we clicked on to launch this in MCA Selector in the first place. You will find a bunch of .mca files, that is the file format which Minecraft uses to store regions of the world. And minus three, minus three dot .mca is specifically this region up here. Now it is unlikely that that region there is going to contain any of the end gateways because the end islands generate in a circle around it, so you could maybe remove each of those from the equation, but yeah, the rest of that is all stuff you want to present so I'm actually going to deselect it. Uh, you can select and deselect regions in MCA Selector by left clicking and right clicking. So left click to select, right click to deselect. And the reason those are showing up red is because they are full regions we are selecting. If you wanted to be a bit more granular and zoom right in and maybe just draw around this end city here, which we have clearly been out to and explored before, you go in and you hold left click and drag an area around like that and that will show up orange to show that you are selecting chunks of the world and not full regions. Obviously if you zoom out a little bit more you can select the full region like so and then the entire thing shows up red. But we're going to deselect those areas as well for now and zoom out and focus on the bigger picture. As you can see there are a number of different directions in which I have explored the end extensively. Going up to up here that is about 8,000 blocks out according to the block indicator on that lower bar down there in MCA Selector, and as you can see, I've been out to some end cities which were pretty far out. That one's nearly 7,000 blocks away. We encountered a couple more on the peripheries here, and as you can see, the end dimension hasn't been really heavily explored. Those are just the convenient gateways that I've gone through from the central end island. In fact, it seems like I've never really been southeast at all, <laughs> so that's an unexplored section of the map. However, what we wanted to do is make sure that I deleted the end city that I had just been to, along with a lot of the other areas outside of the central ring of islands, because I haven't built anything that far out in the end, and if I'm a server admin and I want to make sure that my players have nice easy access to end cities in other parts of the server, then it's probably going to be a good idea for me to go ahead and delete anything that is outside of this central ring here, make sure those end gateways are preserved and that anything else is taken care of. And because end city generation is largely determined by the world seed, you should find the same configuration of end cities with the same shulkers, the same elytra, sometimes even the same chest loot as they found when they were originally explored. Now if you want to find the end city I was at in the first part of this video, we need to be looking out east for a start because that's the direction I went in when I left my end gateway but I did take the coordinates down as I was traveling through that area and the coordinates are positive 2633, negative 1230. So if we zoom in on roughly that area I think you'll find that it is this end city here or maybe no it's actually that one there we can zoom in on that guy now that's the city that we've just explored it had a boat out there it had a couple of rooms that collided together and as you can see from the block coordinates down there on the uh kind of information bar at the bottom of the screen there that is the coordinates of the end city we were just at so if i wanted to delete just this end city it would be as simple as selecting this area going to selection and hitting delete selected chunks or using the keyboard shortcut Control d if i do that right now it's going to give me a warning message saying you're about to delete 104 chunks from the world are you sure and i should probably quickly zoom out to make sure i didn't accidentally highlight anything closer to the center nope that red chunk there is just the uh redstone around the end portal looks like everything is fine and that is 104 chunk selection so i'm going to hit Control d i'm going to confirm 
and that section there is all deleted from the world. It refreshes the region for a second there, which is why it all goes grey, but then those chunks have now all been deleted. That doesn't mean there's going to be a giant hole in that end island when I return there. Instead, it's allowing the game to regenerate the chunk data for those chunks. So whenever I go back to that area, you're going to find that the end city is back where it was, and all of the shulkers and everything has just been restored to the end city. Naturally, though, if your end has been explored a little bit further, you are probably going to take a more holistic approach. Instead of just deleting this one small section, you're going to want to delete a huge amount of it. And for that, we are going to select all of this arm of the uh, sort of eastern side of the end that we've already explored. And I'm going to hit Control D, and we're about to delete 258,048 chunks from my world. Am I happy with that? I think for the purposes of this video, I am. So <laughs> we are going to just go ahead and delete all of that. By the way, it is very important that you make backups of your Minecraft world, and I should have mentioned that earlier, but at this point, now that you know how to delete large sections of your Minecraft world, I should probably remind you, making backups is very important if you don't want to accidentally delete something that you otherwise might have needed. Having drawn another area of selection at the top here, up north, I don't think there was anything else in the northern area aside from the village that I built, which is definitely remaining safe down there. We are going to hit Control D once again, delete a whole bunch more chunks and then we're going to highlight this large section out here and I think that is safe as long as our wither rose farm here is safe I think that should be absolutely fine to delete as well so I'm going to remove that that's another 146,000 chunks last but not least this small section down here can probably get deleted as well it looks like that doesn't contain any of our central ring of stuff and we're going to delete the remaining chunks there now we are left with just this small area which will hopefully contain everything that we have ever built in the end. One more important thing to note is that we don't have to click file save or anything. Basically what this program has been doing is deleting the files associated with those regions of the world from the world folder for you. So you don't have to go through and click on all of the numbers and make sure you know which one is which. So once again make sure you are absolutely confident about which sections of the world you are going to delete before you do anything like this because it could be disastrous if you end up losing something that you didn't want to lose. Make backups and you will always be safe, but err on the side of caution with this stuff, always. There are a bunch of other really cool things you can do with MCA Select, and I won't go into them too heavily here, but in the tools section up here, there is a filter chunks function, which actually allows you to set a lot of custom data, including how long a chunk was inhabited. So you can actually search for how long a player has been in a chunk, and that can be a really effective way to basically trim out the chunks in your world that are useless, or you know that haven't really been used for very much at all. But in this case, we don't need to worry too much about that because all we are planning on deleting is the areas that have all of the end cities outside of the central ring of islands. And I think now it's time to jump back into Minecraft, we will fly out to the coordinates of the end city we visited earlier in the episode, and we will see if it has been restored to its former glory. Hey folks, welcome back here to Minecraft. I was just sorting through the loot I had gotten from that end city loot chest and all of the stuff that I gathered from the shulkers. It turns out we got ourselves about 32 shulker shells, a dragon head, some elytra and some diamond gear that kind of stuff i was just going to grab my flint and steel real fast break that shulker box and get rid of it all because i think now we have reset that it would be kind of unfair if i was to end up getting more loot as a result i'm not trying to cheat the system here i'm really just trying to educate you guys about how you can reset sections of the end for betterment of your minecraft servers so that'll do i think we'll probably head back to the end now and let's see if we can find that end city again so here we are heading back on through to the end which as you can see is exactly the same as it was before all of my modifications to the central island and are still here because we didn't worry about deleting any of this stuff. We made sure that we kept all of the central stuff. Likewise, when I hop through this gateway, we end up on the same island and this gateway is still there. Let's now fly out to the area where we initially found that end city and we will try and reach the same coordinates and make sure that that end city is still there. Now you can already kind of see that the world is loading new chunks again because it's taking its time loading the world in front of me. But this is definitely the direction we went out in before 
before and pretty soon we should start to see that end city popping up on the horizon. Let's check the coordinates, 2600 and 1200, I think this is the one and it seems to have generated basically exactly the same as it did before, which is great. This is exactly the end city it was when we left it. Now let's take a quick look up here. Yep, the end city ship is intact. We can go down here, claim the brewing stand. The elytra is over here in the item frame. Let's take out this shulker here as well. Let's see if the loot in these chests is the same. Yep, two gold ingots and some beetroot seeds, a knockback sword with bane of arthropods, and a handful of other gold ingots. There we go, we're getting exactly the same loot as we did the first time around because the world seed has decided what that loot is before we even find this place. But perhaps most importantly, all of the shulkers are still here as well, so we can go ahead and claim those shulker shells once again, and if this was on a multiplayer server, it would be possible to basically have as many shulker boxes as we wanted to, which is pretty important as a server gets towards its end game. Now with the nether update on the horizon, I can imagine what some of you folks might be thinking, can you do the same thing using MCA Selector and the Nether? Well, the answer is yes, you can. It might be a little bit more difficult though, because the Nether, when viewed from the top down, is really just a massive amount of bedrock and not much else. But when you go into MCA Select and open up that DIM minus one folder, you get something kind of interesting happening. You go to the regions folder there, select that, and you'll notice that it actually loads a section of the nether that looks very much like an overview map. And this is because it's basically ignoring the bedrock and it is trying its best to ignore any blocks above stuff that is placed by the player. Significant things like this large area here, which is very clearly our wither skeleton file, Farm. The above the nether gold farm that we have is here, so it's not just taking a snapshot of a specific elevation, and underneath that you can even see the outline of the giant compass that we built in our nether hub. Unfortunately, you can't really see any of the biomes that I put under that because they're all covered over with glass, but that's still pretty cool. Out here, as you can see, there are the sections where I built those two custom biomes to look like the new biomes that are coming in the update, and further afield you'll see an ice road that leads out eventually to to our ski resort project over here and I think you can see the remains of that nether portal over there. So you can still get something of an overview of the chunks of the nether that have been loaded and obviously you'll need to take a few notes about where your nether portals are because they are not super obvious but as long as you know where those nether portals are you might still be able to delete some of the chunks of your world and end up removing areas which could regenerate with the new biomes in Minecraft 1.16. And we will be revisiting deleting chunks of the nether in a future episode probably just before the nether update arrives because because that's going to be a vital time for people to reset sections of their nether dimensions so that those new biomes can spawn. But I think for today, that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you folks so much for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.